Okay, so I want to talk to you guys about routing for a little bit now. And routing is, uh, once we have converted this signal uh, into electronic uh, information, we have to be able to send it places and do things with it, right? And there's some concepts that are really important. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to talk about how routing has traditionally been done in a mixer. Uh, many of you will never use a mixer in your life. Uh, some of you may. You may sit down in front of a, a big SSL console that looks like a... You may sit in front of something that looks like this at some point in your careers. Okay? And uh, so my goal today is to make it that when you sit in front of that, um, at least the seizure is short as you try to remember that you had seen some of this stuff before, right? Because uh, they are kind of intimidating looking, right? They're so huge. But they're actually simpler than, than you might think. Okay. So uh, we're going to go in this mixer, and what we're going to try to do when we're in a mixer is we're going to be handling multiple channels at the same time, right? Multiple channels. And uh, each uh, channel will usually come into what's called a channel strip. So let me see if I can, I'm going to try to get this kind of line, line up here a little bit. Uh, if we look over at the uh, at the the mixer here uh, at the top, what we see in this section right in here, uh, from about here to here, uh, these are the inputs, the I/O section. Actually, I can leave out the O there. It's just the I section, the input section. Okay, and uh, you'll see here different types of connector types. Can anyone tell me uh, what uh, maybe that connector type is right there? The the one that my Magnifying glass is over? XLR. It's an XLR. Would it be male or female? Female. And would it be balanced or unbalanced? Balanced. balanced? Probably. Because these channels are usually mono. Does that make sense? These channels are usually mono. I think these might be a stereo channel here. In fact, it looks like. What are the inputs on this channel right here? At the top there that I'm kind of next to. What kind of, what kind of connectors? Light. No. RCA. RCA. Those are, that's what RCA looks like. Usually the red and white is RCA, okay? And so there's two, so what does it probably mean about that channel? Stereo. Is it balanced? No. Okay. If I wanted to do a balanced stereo over here, what would I have to do? Say I had uh, two mics over the drums, and I wanted to come in left and right, what would I have to do over in this area? Two channels. I have two mics, two cables, and two channels. And I probably would have left and right. Channel one would be left, and channel two would be right. We're going to be doing all sorts of that next week. So uh, what are these other inputs up here? What kind of connectors are those? Can anyone tell me? Quarter inch, male or female. Balanced or unbalanced. Hard to tell. Time to get out the manual. <laughs> that makes sense? Can't see in there, right? Okay. Uh, right below that, so that's your input. And then, then this section is uh, usually, let's see, it's kind of red on this one, so maybe I'll match the colors here a little bit. Uh, this section right here is the trim section. And that is where you give uh, how much level you're going to boost your microphones. Okay? This is your preamp. This converts your mic level is now being converted to line level. And from here out, everything we're going to do to it is going to be line level. Okay. <clears throat> this next section right here uh, is going to be the EQ section. And this is pretty standard on these mixers, right, till about here. Okay. EQ section. Okay. And usually the way that'll be is you'll have a high and then probably a low, and this is probably a low filter or, lo or low cut filter here at the bottom. And then in, the, in, the, in between here, you'll probably have a uh, uh, two parametrics as opposed to the four we're used to, right, in, in Logic. 
uh, where you can control the frequency, but you probably can't control the ba bandwidth. You can only control what frequency it's boosting and cutting. Okay. So the signal comes in through here, gets boosted here, and then gets route through the EQ. And then oft sometimes, it'll depend on the uh, uh, mixer, sometimes you'll have a, uh, a compression, compression section built in there. It doesn't look like this one does. Okay? It doesn't look like this does. Uh, then we're going to run into the next section, which I'll use this brown color for. And we're going to call this the uh, sends. The sends section. That's the section where you take some of that signal, some of this here, and you route it out somewhere. In fact, it goes out these holes right here. Okay, this channel had uh, a said uh, actually that looks like a compressor. It might be a compressor. Can't tell. Let me can't see. No, I can't. Uh, but let's pretend they're sends. Okay, so it would send out one of these uh, jacks or plugs right here. It would go out to say something like a reverb. And then come back in here. Okay. And uh, um, you can send multiple channels to the same output. So all the ones across here at this top would go to output one to send one. This might be send two. This might be send three. This might be send four. Does that make sense? Okay. Maybe come over there a little bit more. Then here you'll usually have your pan, which it looks like this one has. Pan. And then th this section right down here is your fader. It's called a fader. Your fader is how much of this signal that's coming through here am I going to let go out to the real world? Pan is left or right. The red is the pan there. There's usually, like right in here, and I can actually see them, uh, there's a solo and a mute. It looks like the, the, the gray round button is a solo because you see the little uh, yellow icon next to it, the little yellow button. probably lights up, LED, sorry. And then above it is probably the mute, and there's a little red thing next to it, and it probably goes red. So you have your solo and mute there. This should look pretty familiar to you from Logic, right? It's actually the other way around. It's like this, and Logic made it look like that. So when it comes out of this fader, you also have some important things right here that uh, I want you to be familiar with that uh, you probably haven't um, had much experience with yet. And that's what we're going to talk one of the other things we're going to talk about today. Sorry. So right in this section right here are these little buttons. And you'll see that there are four little buttons next to this uh, fader. Those buttons tell me where the output from this channel is going to go. I have an auxiliary send. I can send a copy of it to this auxiliary output, but this is the main output from that channel. Okay? It's like if this was a river coming along here, I could send a little, I could divert a little bit of that river out here, right? A little out to a, a, a little pond or to sprinkle my fields, in, in, you know, or use a, what is the, what is a, I'm blanking on what is a thing of water that someone has dug, a canal, there's the word. I could send a little river out to the canal, but the main body of water is going to come down here. Where am I going to send it to? If I press the button that says master or stereo left to right, it's going to send it out what's called the master bus. What is a bus? A bus is anywhere where you combine more than one signal. Okay. So if I have channel 1, I have channel 2, I have channel 3, and I have channel 4, and they're all going to the master bus. They'll all come over here, and they'll join onto the master bus like that, and it'll come out. In fact, it's usually left to right. And that pan will determine where it is on that bus. The pan will say all the way to the left or all the way to the right. Two bus. The term we use for the master bus, yes. So what would be a reason to have multiple outputs? Oh, we are going to so get to that. We are so going to get to that, and you're going to actually do that. So, uh, good. it's a great question. It's right where I'm headed. Okay, so all these channels are the same. Input, EQ, input, trim, EQ, send a copy somewhere, pan it left and right, solo mute it, and route it out to an output. And the main output we've been using has been the two bus. Okay, now, why would we want to use <laughs> a different output? There's a couple reasons. 
Uh, one is, if you guys remember, I used multiple outputs when I had the two sets. I had four microphones, right? I had the uh, stereo pair, uh, the ribbon mics in, the, uh, in with the musicians, and then I had the Neumanns up above, right? And I wanted to, comp to change the level of all four mics at the same time. So I routed all four of those out a bus where I could control, and then back in another channel where I could control that level. And so I could turn up all the mics with just that one thing. It didn't affect the direct uh, signal of the bass. It didn't affect the timpanis, and it didn't affect that kick drum, the big bass drum. But I could turn up and down all the mics together. Another time you'd often use a, a bus like that would be, say, in, in Logic, at least. You, you have the drums, and you have kick, snare, hi-hat. You might have four or five channels of drums. You want to turn all the drums down. So you route all the drums out of bus and then bring that into another channel and then you control that level of that channel and now you're turning up all the, all the drums at once. Oh, I'm... That makes sense? Yeah, I thought my outputs different, uh, where, where the audio would come from, but you mean different channels, output would be a bus. To different buses. Yeah. The, out, the output of the channel is squirting out the bottom here and going to a particular bus. Uh, no, that makes okay. sense. Now the main reason on a, on a uh, mixer like this that you would use it was there is no recorder in this mixer. I know this is mind-blowing for you guys, but back in the day, the mixer and the recording device were two different items. And so I had to bring in all of my mics here, set the trim on them, set the EQ, maybe put a little compression on it, and then I needed to get it out to the tape recorder and record the darn thing. And so my mixer would have X number of bus outs, up to 24. This one has eight bus outs, I can see. Okay, These bus outs are right here in this black right here. I can see this. This is the master section. Sorry, I know that's a little low. Okay, These are the bus outs. <laughs> uh, right here. And these buttons now, I can assign them to the stereo mix. Now, I'm not sure why there's three faders here. I can assign to stereo, but I can tell you that above that, there is output 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay? And it will send a signal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. If I pan it to the left, it'll be 1, to the right, 2. Left, 3, right, 4. Left, 6, uh, 7, 8, okay? Uh, and so that these then would go out to the tape recorder. And I would want these to be as loud as possible going to the tape recorder, my best signal-to-noise ratio I could possibly get. Go out to the tape recorder. However, when I'm sitting there listening to it, maybe I don't want the bass or the vocal background to be near as loud as the snare, for example, right? Even though on tape I want it to be as loud as possible when I listen to it. And so what you would do is you would route these out on this side to these buses. It would go out to the tape mixer, and then you take the outputs of the tape mixer, and guess what you do? You come over here on this side, and your tape mixer would come back in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you would mix the levels to the master bus from this side, where you could change the levels. I would have the kick and the snare louder. I'd have the accompanying guitar a little bit quieter. The background vocal is much quieter. So I could monitor it from here. You don't need this right-hand side if you don't have a tape thing associated with it. And so what most mixers now that you're going to be familiar with, you're going to have your channel strips here, and then you have your master section here. And your master section is mainly going to be your two bus and your effects returns from your auxiliary sends. When we use an FX return, well, I've got snare here, I've got a vocal singer here, I've got guitar here, and I want them all to have a little bit of reverb. I send them all out this first um, auxiliary output, this first FX send, goes out to the reverb out here in space, comes back in here in this input, and I can control the level. That's probably what this one is right here, the amount of reverb that's coming back. And we will do that exact thing in Logic 2. So the, two t the three times you want to use buses. One is to get it out the main out, Two is, you, you want to you do a sub-mix. You want to mix all the components of the drums together so you can control it separately. Uh, three is, you're doing an effects send where you're sending multiple channels to the same effect. Questions? Ah, I, I forgot to mention the phantom power up here. You see this little button right here? Up by the trim area, there's a, always a button up there for phantom power. What do you need that for?
forgot. What kind of microphone? This type of microphone that needs phantom power. What are the type of microphones? Ribbon, but not ribbon, because it can destroy a ribbon, actually. When dynamic does not need power because it generates its own. Condenser mic. Right? Condenser, remember, it monitors the difference in capacitance, and to do that, it has to have that, it has to have that uh, uh, um, phantom power going through it. Okay. You see, uh, trim, how much you're boosting your, your microphone preamp, phantom power. An auxiliary send is a, a separate mix, right? A separate mix. Oops. This is a separate mix right here. Uh, a Q-mix is generally one of, that's another reason you'd want an auxiliary send too. You could use a Q-mix. So uh, say Michael wants to hear more bass in his mix than I want to hear as I'm monitoring it, right? Or the other Michael want to, might want to hear in his mix. I'm sending him a sub, a Q-mix, okay? And I could use an effect send for that or a send for that. It wouldn't be an effect send. It would be a Q send at that point. A bus output is any time when I take the output of a channel and I'm sending it somewhere else other than the main out, okay? The two buses, the main out. Eight by four by two, what does that mean? Well, if I have this mixer right here, I have over here on the left, it looks like 16 channels. Yes. 16 by right here, this is eight outputs. So we would call this a 16 by eight. Now, this looks like it might have more than one main output on it. I'm not, I don't understand what's going on there. But usually you would have two outputs for your main out. So when you see a mixer listed like this with these numbers, this usually means how many channels it has, how many bus outputs it has, and its master output. Does that make sense? So if you see a 16 by 8 by 2, it would have 16 channels, 8 uh, bus outputs to go to a tape machine, which doesn't exist anymore, and the master out. So if you ever see those numbers, that's what you're talking about. A return is in any input in that master section where the re returns would come back in right in here, an effects return usually, okay? Oh, one other thing, auxiliary input, you'll see that here, that sometimes they have extra inputs, often they're RCA, uh, for if you just want to plug a tape machine in, you know you're not going to um, do any EQ or anything on that tape machine or an iPod, and you just want it to be able to come into the main mix, it would go right here, not through a channel. We just call them auxiliary input. Here you can see they kind of have uh, a hybrid version auxiliary. They come in here. There's no microphone preamps on this, but you've got a couple little extra stereo inputs that could come in here. And that would, that's what it would be for. Does that make sense? Okay, so we're going to start by creating a submix here. Open Logic, create five audio tracks. And then I'm going to go ahead and label them. Uh, let's let lead, uh, accompaniment one, accompaniment two, bass, rhythm. Go ahead and label them that. And then what I'd like you to do is go into loops and find yourself uh, some drums for the rhythm part. A bass, don't even, I wouldn't even listen to it. I'm not going to listen to mine. I'm just going to go grab them. Uh, two accompaniment parts, maybe a guitar and a piano. And then some sort of lead, uh, lead instrument over the top. And uh, just go quick. It doesn't need to be pretty. And for some of you, you get to re-index loops every single time now. I'm not sure why that is.
Okay, this is... So I'd like it to be something similar to that. I grabbed uh, some guitar, some piano, two-step thump bass, a beat, and then vertical lead layer. I have no idea what this is going to sound like. Too bad. I'm going to just pause this, and if you can uh, put your flags up. 